This little thing, Moja 1, measures the distances as I move along. Like here on this bridge, it is happily capturing distances and drawing them out as I simply move from one point to the next, but it does so much more. This world we live in is not a 2D smooth plain sailing level surface. There are bumps, twists and dips along the way, which is why as I walk with Moja 1, it is actually capturing the ground beneath my feet in three dimensions. So let me show you if I just fast forward here, you know, to all intents and purposes, it looks like Mosier has captured just the distances, lengths, and calculated the total perimeter and total area, which it's great considering all I had to do was just walk around holding a stick. But check this out. I will flip from 2D view into 3D and a whole new world. Little did I know that inside this little box were things happening with computations, calculations, summations and all sorts of other machinations that I don't understand, which means essentially in simple terms that we have changes in elevation, rise and fall and gradients. So I can select any point and actually just a note, every point you capture will have x, y and z coordinates relative to the start point of your measurement. This is the origin point where I started. So x, y and z are 0, 0, 0 and the z coordinate refers to the elevation. We can see it increase the further along I go which suggests like our drawing shows that there is an elevation change such as a ramp here. But Mosier one can go further. So let's say I wanted to know the rise or fall between this point here and this point here. I simply select this point and then within my suite of tools select cross section tool. Now I shall select this point and there we have the length, the rise and the run. The cross section tool enables you to easily calculate the length rise and run between any two points, between point A and B. Even if the elevation change is not perceptible to the naked eye, like let's say these two points, the cross-section tool will reveal more. There is a minimal change, which just goes to show that it doesn't matter if it's a large elevation change or a minimal change. If it's there, Mosier will capture it. But to do a deeper dive, I shall select gradient and now we see with more detail the gradient, which I might want to know for disability compliance in this instance, which you know is obviously important. Let's check the elevation change also on this flight of steps. It's the same process. Select a point and select the cross section tool. Let's select this point here at the top of the steps. That's the total rise and run. Uh, let's just press gradient to get more details and there we have our slope as well. Mosier has done all the math for me. I have not had to do any calculations. Or over here as well, this ramp was measured with arc as a path type, but it's the same result. Mosier picks up the elevation changes and draws it in three dimensions. We have a lot of information here which already we use to make design decisions and check if this will comply with building codes. The process of capturing the elevation change was straightforward. I chose close shape to begin with and I waited for the light to go from red to green. It was in, happened in moments. By default, the pad type is set to straight line off of when placing Mojo 1 down every 6 to 8 seconds. And I find the timer bar at the top a very usual, useful visual aid as to when to place the device down. I like to place it down, if I can, just as the green merges into the amber. And when I place it down, I place the device down gently. Now if I need to measure a curve section, I simply change path types mid-measurement. Here I chose arc and captured three or more points to create the arc. 
it gives a better representation of this curved section within this space but all the while the distances are being measured and plotted onto the screen but beneath this the elevation changes are also being captured but just a note actually on the cross section tool it will also calculate the elevation change between layers so i'll quickly open up uh, this measurement with multiple layers select a point on the bottom deck select our cross section tool and let's choose this point on a separate layer which is the roof deck we now have our length rise and run which in this case you can see indicates the height of the building but you get the idea what a powerful tool it is now in all the instances i've shown you so far i have chose closed shape as i wanted to know the perimeter and the total areas by the end the process of capturing the elevation is the same as any other measurement type whether that is open shape or point to point for example here is an open a shape measurement on a fence uh, on a fence line using arc as a path type so let me select this point and the coordinates are zero 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 the next point shows the z value at point three the elevation change in this instance it's negligible using the cross section tool between these two points shows a fall of 0 0.3 feet but the elevation change you know, it's, 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 it's minimal, but it's there to be found, however small, and Mojo 1 will find it. The gradient is also just like that. Again, that's minimal, but it's there, and it's going to matter to someone if they want it. But if you'd like to measure the gradient, let's say, between and the distance between a point A and just a point B, I would recommend using point to point. Uh, pressing the start a new measurement button the plus symbol at the bottom of the Mojo Pro app that is and selecting point to point we are good to go as you can see and as I make my way up that hill and capture the second point I get a near instantaneous readout of the gradient as the distance between my two points you can see it displayed on the screen I can keep going and capturing as many points as I need to. The final result will be the distance between the first point and the last point showing the gradient there. You can see it there represented. Um, I want to say as well that it's also possible with Mojo 1 to capture the elevation changes by mapping the boundary features and levels of a site. Like let me just show you here for example. This mini topographical survey so to speak is quite useful as many of you will know to be a very key component in the design process for any site i started a new measurement selected a close shape and now i've measured out the boundary so i've just gonna let me fast forward it here and when i get to the start endpoint at this stage i don't end the measurement i switch my path type which has been in straight line to points path and now I will map out this hillock mound, so to speak, by capturing points as I survey and move over the terrain. My top tip here is to capture more points where there is a greater elevation change. This will increase the accuracy of your topographical readout at the end. On the flat surface and the top surface, I can take less points. Now, whether you zigzag or move in linearly or never in increasing or decreasing circles over this terrain, that's up to you. Historically, well, I just want to say there is no right or wrong, but historically, I would capture points every 400 mil or 15 to 16 inches, but old habits die hard. So I will fast forward this video for you so you're not here all day watching me. And when I have finished capturing points, I ensure that I end on my origin start endpoint and close the shape by tapping the finish measurement button. And I flip my drawing to 3D select a point at the bottom and then select the cross section tool let's select this point here at the top of the mound and that's the total rise and run i'll select gradient as well to get more details and we can see what the slope is on there as well so easy of course now that we've gone to the trouble of capturing all of these points of which i can get the elevation between all of them if i want we can now see another view, our surface area view. If I select the surface area icon, we now have a detailed map of this piece of land. Visually, we can see the elevation changes with our own eyes. So let me just pan around so you can see the contours, undulations, etc. of this piece of land. And let me select the cut and fill tool here within the edit suite. 
If I move the slider down to, the bo to bottom it out, I can see its volume or how much I would need to cut and remove. It's all color coordinate, so it makes sense. And if I move the slider bar to the peak of the mound, I can see how much material I need to fill if that is what I want to do. It's just brilliant. Or I can tap on net and zero that, which gives me an indication of how much earth I need to move around in order to level it out and how much excess I need to take away in the dump trucks, which, you know, if that is something that I want to do. There is a depth tool there also which you can slide up and down which is for example really useful for working out how much mulch or other material you want to spread over this space. Moving along to another view, tapping the contours icon, we immediately see the topography from another viewpoint and it is useful as it illustrates the shape of the land. Depressions, rises, bumps, etc. can be highlighted here, helping you to understand the elevation changes and their effect on the design build process. And even where those depressions and bumps are not so obvious like a typical yard or a back garden, or if you're an Englishman whose house is his castle, then your lawn is most certainly your estate, as the saying goes. If you're an Irishman, I'm not really too sure. It's, it's, it's a piece of land. It's my field. But then there is a similar process of measuring the grass perimeter and switching to points path. And let me just fast forward here to the end where our last point is where we first began. Finish the measurement and dive in. We have our usual total area, per total perimeter, so I know how much I need for my herbicide applications, fertilizer applications, or even if I want to make decisions on overseeding. But loading the 3D view shows us the elevation changes with the cross-section tool. That's the slope from one end of the yard to the other and I can see the incline and begin to get a picture of what I need to know for irrigation projects like the head pressure, the head height, etc. And now I can get even more viewpoints of this yard project from the surface views and the contour views if I tap the icons that help to complement and enhance my understanding of this whole space. So I'm just going to tap the surface area icon and I immediately see by tapping net and zeroing that what I've got to do if I want to level out uh, this whole space. So if I move the depth tool, let's say an input two inches into depth, which is about right, now I know how much mulch I need uh, to layer over. I don't need to waste money because I've got my numbers and I don't need to waste money because I, I won't need to over order now, which is brilliant, it's great. And moving now on to the contour tool, I can see a very clear picture of the contour lines in this garden and which way immediately the water runs. It's all color coordinate, I can see which way. It's so quick, it's so easy, it makes my life, gives me peace of mind. Of course, this drawing, these numbers, all these points captured can be exported to DXF for CAD programs like AutoCAD, for example. I just do that now, load it into the Autodesk viewer. There you are, it's so easy, just, just done straight away, it dovetails into the workflow. And you know, you've got your CSV points for those who just want the coordinates as well. But just look at this device. It's only a little thing and looking at it, I really didn't think that there would be much to talk about. But as you can see, Mojo One, it packs a lot under the hood.